Yes. Yes, indeed. This morning again, they hear the sound of the kingdom of God coming to you live on Styles of M Radio. This is Victoria Miller. The program is lighting my world. I just want to apologize for being a bit late, but it's better late than never. So I'm here this morning to still lift up the name of Jesus, to still allow somebody to know that Jesus Christ is the King. Yes, He is. And so I'll be here up until 9 a.m. this morning again. We'll move your dial a hinge, keep it locked to Stars FM Radio. to 
indeed we are here to worship the king of kings yeah. and the lord of lords this morning and again yes we wanted to keep it locked to styles fm right now we are about to go into the word a bit late but yet still the word is necessary i want to say good morning to all wonderful massive and crew wherever you may be keep it locked to styles fm don't move your dial an inch Yes, yes, yes. Listening to the sound of my voice. This is Victoria Miller. The program is Lighting My World. Can we worship the king this morning again? Is all together worthy. There's no end to his worthiness. He's God forevermore. He sit king forever.
Yes, indeed, I give myself away. And on that note, I just want the enemy to know who I am in this place, in this earth, that I have given myself away and comes L R I water. Myself is already given away. There's nothing I can do about it. And so we continue to look into the book of Acts again today, reviewing the church through the book of Acts. And we are at part 37 this week. And so we continue to look at the book of Acts and see that the church today is way off. Yes. And so therefore, Father, we lift up your name. We, 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 we praise you. We honor you. We, we laud you. We applaud you this day again, Almighty God. Because you alone are God. You alone sit king forever. You are sovereign. And so because of your sovereign reign today, we appreciate you. We love you. Yes, we do. Understanding, great king, that you alone are God. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving. We enter into your courts with praise. We offer up our praise to you with our life. It's not about a lip thing. It's about a lifestyle this morning, almighty God. And so we give self to you as I sit here into Stars FM studio to represent on your behalf. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with me to bless and to do good. And so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against everything that is not of God this morning. I beat them small as the dust. I render them null and void against this sound going out into the atmosphere. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, as you allow yourself to be glorified and magnified. As you bring conviction to your great name. As you allow persons to understand, Almighty God, that indeed there is no one else like you. And so I release you in the atmosphere. I release you around the nations of the world. I release you, great King and God, for you to do only what you can do. Bring conviction to your name. Let all other God be silent this morning and let your name be lifted up for what it is and who you are. Great King, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in and through my life right now. Jesus' name. Yes. And so, again, I'm happy to be in the presence of the King. I'm happy that you are listening because an opportunity is now given to you where you can change your life, change your circumstances. So I'm, I'm happy that you are here. I'm happy to be here also. And so we continue to look at the book of Acts and see that the church today is way off. They are like a body without an head that use things to substitute their head. That's what we see the church looking like today. A body without the head and using things to substitute for the head. That's what we see where the church is concerned. And so the church in the book of Acts recognized their head and who he was because of this they were geared towards God. Yes, they were geared towards God seeing that they know that God is their king, they know that God is their ultimate government, and they acknowledge where they were, that they were seated in a kingdom. And so the church today sits in the idol of Christianity as their head. So they are geared towards idol. Having a form of godliness called Christianity, the church in the book of Acts didn't substitute God. I would like to say that this radio station is the baddest thing ever. No, I, listen, listen to me when I say, listen, listen. I, no, 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 don't leave me, let me talk. I want to tell them Styles FM, rocking, rocking everywhere I go. I don't even know what that is about, but right in the middle, I don't even see where it's playing from. And so the church in the book of Acts didn't substitute God. Hence, 
they could manifest his power. They did not substitute who God was. They acknowledged where they were seated, that they were in the kingdom. Hence, when you look at the book of Acts, you know that something is definitely wrong with us today. Because we are not functioning like them. And we don't want eyeglass to see this. We don't want eyeglass to know this. And so we don't tend to go back and look at the scripture to see what was it that they have that we today don't have. We continue to put on a show. We continue to be of like. And we continue to imitate what man established. Hence, we see a powerless church. But the church over there in the book of Acts, they did not substitute God. Hence, they could manifest his power. And so idols have no power. They are dead. Hence, we see the deadness of the church that we see today. Idols have no power. And that is why the church is so lukewarm. The church today sits in a system that is of the devil. The antichrist is what govern the church system today that we see. So if you ask if the antichrist is here, yes, he's here. He is the one who operates and function in all religion. Every religious movement. This is what the antichrist does. He's the head of it. And he likes to keep it that way. And God's people are so ignorant. Not understanding that because they have a form of what God is about. There is another imposter who sits as the head. Because anything that God did not establish, he will not support. So if God is not supporting it, then something else will support it. Yes, to keep it where it's supposed to be. Because as long as the spirit occupy the mind of, of people, it can keep persons from coming into the true will and the purpose of God. And so today, that's what we see in church. A set of people that is so occupied with the religious duties and chores. Yes. And do not understand the move of God, the time of God, the season of God, the leading of the spirit. And so we are just occupied with church rules, church chores. Yeah. And so the church sits in a system that is of the devil. The church in the book of Acts have a king as their head. They recognize Jesus Christ as their king. No, because that's Jesus' position right now. God has given the kingship to him, and he's not ruling in the throne of David yet. So the father has given him the rule. Yes. He said, sit here at my right hand until I make your enemy your footstool. So Jesus Christ is ruling in this age and this season as king. Right? And he rules and, and on the Father's behalf. Yes. And so the church in the book of Acts have a king as their head. The church today have the Antichrist. And that word Christ there, it means king. So what it means is anti-king. Yes. And that is why we don't see the kingdom system in the church. Because what anti-king do, it go against kingdom rule. Yes. Yes, the church today have the antichrist of Christianity or the anti-king as their head. If Jesus the king is the head of the church in the book of Acts and he brought back a government that is a kingdom, then Christianity, the religion, is an imposter. Anti-king. It's what the church substitute the kingdom with. It started way over there, but until today, we are still in it. And we need to divorce it. We need to repent. We need to come out from underneath the umbrella and cut off the unbiblical card for this from the religion of Christianity as the church. Because the religion of Christianity is a religion. And so all religions operate from the spirit of the Antichrist, even Christianity. The spirit of the Antichrist is an imposter and an imitator. And he is who is in the church and among us. 
he parade and set himself as God. But when you look in the scripture, you see that all religions is not in line with the scripture. When you look carefully and see what the scripture is about, people in a church and Christianity today can't even clearly understand the Bible because they are reading it from a, a religious mindset. They read it, read it from based upon how Christianity teach. Hence, they can't understand the reality of the kingdom for what it is. And so the kingdom of God is one. And God is one. The king built his church to function in his kingdom on the earth. Let me say that again. The kingdom of God is one. And God is one. And so we see King Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. And guess what? The gate of hell will never be able to prevail against it. Right? And so the king built his church to function in his kingdom on the earth. So whoever is called by the name of the king is supposed to be in his kingdom following his mind, his intent. Not to be following anything or to do anything that he did not call us to do. But we are supposed to be understanding what is the mind of the king, what he wants done for each day. Because it's a continuing process. Right? And so the person of the Holy Spirit is who come to us to bring us into the, the mind of the king. But we are not led by the person of the Holy Spirit. We are led by our religious program. We are set up by our religious fundamentals. That is why we have black book with rules and fundamentals that is separate and apart from the scriptures. Hence, what we live and breed for is our religious fundamentals. Right? So when you look at the church today, they didn't, they don't follow the mind of Christ. Hence, they would preach what the king called them to preach and what the king himself preached. So Jesus Christ preached the kingdom. And he sent the disciple and he said, preach this gospel of the kingdom. But when you look among us today, we, do, we don't hear anything about kingdom. We don't know nothing about kingdom. And we see a weak, wash out, watered down church that is defeated every day by the enemy. And we don't have any backbone or spinal bone to stand like how we are supposed to stand as sons of God. Because we have not come into that knowledge. We have not come where we are called to stand. Right? So it's the knowledge that is lacking where the church is concerned. The king himself announced a kingdom. And we, and we see John the Baptist also announced it before him. So he was not announcing another religion. Even though the religious people of earth misinterpret who these men was. Remember, you know, in Antioch, they call them Christian. Why is, they, why is it they were calling these men Christian? In their mind, they were seeing them as another religion. Another movement of religion. Just because one set up, remember, say, man in a earth, when you come on to God, where man's mind is, mindset is concerned, as you talk about God, all they understand is religion. So we are our king is concerned. When we talk about him, that's what people see. But we and the other, and who is called the church and understand what Christ called us to be, should never see ourselves as a religion. And that's what the church is about today, being in a religion, calling themselves a religion, which is we off. We, we off. And so the king himself announced a kingdom. We hear Jesus saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is here. He did not say the, king, he did not say the Christianity of, of whatever is here. He said the kingdom is advertising and preaching and talking about a government system that he himself brought back. Right? And so the king himself announced a kingdom. And after that, we see John the Baptist. And before that, we see John the Baptist announcing it. And so he announced that it is here. Meaning it's not from hurt. It's from the heavens. So this government system that Jesus Christ brought back 
it don't look nothing like man government. And that is why we can't understand it. And that is why we misunderstand it. And that is why Jesus Christ is the most misunderstood person in the universe of mankind. They misinterpret the guy. They misunderstand him. Not understanding that he was on governmental business. Instead, we seem to be a religious fella. No, he announced that it is here, meaning he's, it is not from earth. It's from the heavens. Now, what does this look like? Hmm? Was he talking about taking a place from its location and bringing it into another location when he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand? No. And so that is why church people is so stuck with going to heaven. Because they can't see say heaven come on earth. It's not the place come, but the king of the place came. Now, why was it important that this kingdom be announced? Why? It's not from earth. It's unlike anything that man will ever understand and know. So, in order for man to get it and understand it, it has to be announced. And so, if you have no Bible knowledge or God knowledge, you will hear this and it means nothing at all to you. You will hear this statement, the kingdom of heaven is at hand and it don't mean nothing. Because where this is concerned, you know, it don't mean nothing to the church. When you look at how today's church function from their religious practice and their denominational background, you recognize and understand that this message don't mean nothing to the church. You don't know, get it? They don't understand it. And that is why they function from these denominations. So if you don't have Bible knowledge and God knowledge, you will hear this and it means nothing to you. It will also mean nothing to you if you don't understand what is a kingdom. Nothing. So where did, where, where, where did the church read this then just read it like a one cliche? The kingdom of, of, of God is here. They don't understand it. So they don't function from it. Hence, we look at a church that is not functioning from outside of the established principle of Christ. Right? And so, because of this, we see the church in a dilemma. We see the church outside of the will of God. We see the church and the denominations doing their own thing. Having a form of godliness. And the real thing that Christ intend and established for the church to sit in, they don't know it. And so it will also mean nothing to us if we don't understand kingdom. And so why we don't understand this is over here in today's day, in today's world, we see a world system of government that is anti-kingdom. A system of government that is anti-kingdom goes against kingdom government. Right? So we now live in a world that is dominated by governments that are not and that are that are not kingdom we now live in a world that is dominated by governments that is anti-kingdom democratic system is anti-kingdom they don't support kingdom they say we the people not kingdom is not we the people and so we see a world a government system that fight against every rule of kingdom they shut down kingdom government and they establish democratic government. And so over there where Jesus, over there where Jesus the king announced this, the Jews heard it and, they, and the Gentiles heard it and they understand this. They know what a kingdom was. They understand that it was a government. Notice error, the minute he understand that a king was born, it affect him deeply. So it wasn't just the Jews. Herod hear the message and Herod understand that, yes, I want king born. He understand that a ruler was born. A ruler domineer, meaning he rules over every opposition of his kingdom. Right? And he is in control of the affair of his kingdom. 
Now, when we talk about Bible knowledge or God knowledge, this kind of knowledge teaches the human race of their true identity. This kind of, of information, now when you take up the Bible, the Bible is an important book to humanity. The Bible is the only book that teaches us the truth about our origin as human being and who our father is. And so the Bible is one book that every human being should seek to learn so they can come into their purpose and understand their destiny and what they are about. But instead, because of the way how Adam fall into sin, leaving mankind depraved, eating God. So man, when Adam fall, man begin to see God as their enemy because of the mindset that they took on. Yes, because of the realm that they were now living from, the sensual realm. They were no longer in the spiritual realm. And so... When we talk about Bible knowledge or God knowledge, this kind of knowledge teaches the human race of their true identity. This kind of knowledge brings the human to know their origins, which was hidden from them. Yes. The Bible teaches the human about an ultimate kingdom who rules the entire universe. The Bible also teaches about a spiritual king who rules as the head of this government. The Bible teaches about a person of authority from the same kingdom who wanted to take the position of the king and was cast out of this position, uh, of his position of authority and out of the kingdom. And so, a fallen servant, servant is he, that the Bible or the kingdom call angel. So he was a fallen angel. He was fallen from his position. Now, whatever God created him, you know, he positioned them to carry out a certain work. So you see, when you get kicked out of your position, it means that you don't have no more place for work from. You don't have no assignment. You are not assigned by the king. So this is who the enemy is. He's an unassigned fallen angel. Right? So that is why he come into the earth and take up man assignment. Yes. And so the Bible teaches about a person of authority from this same kingdom who wanted to take the position of this king and was cast out of his position of authority and out of the kingdom, a fallen servant that the kingdom called angel. It also teaches us about the, this creator. Establishing a kingdom and willed to oppose. Let me say that again. It also teaches about this creature, not creator. This creature establishing the same fallen angel that I just talked about. The Bible teaches about this fallen angel establishing a kingdom and willed to oppose the ultimate kingdom. So if you ask me, there is only two kingdoms in our world. So everything that man established either got influenced by one of these two kingdoms. Every governmental system, every, everything that man will ever do in planet Earth, in the natural realm, are going to be governed or influenced by either one of these kingdoms. So is it that they are going to be influenced by the kingdom of darkness or they are going to be influenced by the kingdom of God? But one of these kingdoms must influence mankind because mankind is here to put and display what is in the spiritual realm where kingdom is concerned, right? And so the Bible teaches that God's children was deceived by this creature. And he took their dominion over the earth as rulers and enslaved mankind, the son of God, or the sons of God. The Bible teaches also of a seed that would come into the earth that shall be called the son of David. All of these things, we learn them in scripture. 
right? But I'm, I'm, I'm in a summer right now to let us see why this, 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 this simple message was important. This announcement that the king announces himself when he said, um, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Right? And so the Bible teaches of a seed that would come in the earth that shall be called the son of David. The Bible also teaches that the son of David would function as the king. And he is the second Adam that would give mankind salvation. Why mankind needs salvation? Because we, as we see up there that mankind was already deceived. Mankind was inheritance was taken away. It was taken away by the old overthrow archangel. And they were now enslaved to carry out his mind and his intent and to allow his kingdom to influence their lives. So when you look at the world where mankind is, is, is concerned, we are a corrupted um, set of people because we are run and domineered by the kingdom of darkness. But the Bible tells us that somebody would come to give back mankind salvation because man is enslaved to carry out the will of the enemy. And so the Bible teaches about this son of David would function as the king and he is a second Adam and that would give mankind salvation again to return into the kingdom of God. Right? So returning into the kingdom of God was rightly aligning man back into their position as sons again liberating them from the kingdom of darkness, which is Satan, the overthrow person from the kingdom of God. And so man dominion, our rulership in the beginning, was to rule over the earth with a kingdom system of government. As it was in heaven, so they would rule on the earth. But man ruled for a short while. Where we see Adam establish the animal kingdom. And today it still remains what it is as a kingdom. Yes, we see Adam, God said to him, say, have dominion. And we see him put in the structure and the different, different function of the animal. The, he, he actually positioned these animals into their position of that animal kingdom. So we see him ruling right there. So it was the, this promise that was now being fulfilled when John announced it and Jesus preached it. The promise of a government coming back to earth. Because when Adam sinned, Adam took independence from this government. Adam gave over in rights and in dominion. So every right we see the devil have today is that which he take from man. Right? And so man left powerless. Right? To be run and governed by the enemy. Did we see a powerless Jesus? No. Jesus was the pattern son who come to earth to show us what man should look like. This was what man looked like before the fall. So we never see Jesus have no problem with anything when he might go to earth. Because earth understand who he was. Remember when he spoke to the fig tree and his fig tree dry up. He spoke to, 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 to some things and they obey him, the wind and the wave, because he is, he is Lord. Man in his, in, in, in his position before his, he fall, Jesus was just showing them who they were before they fall. And so it is this position and this access that Jesus and John the Baptist announced. But in order for man to come back into it, man must understand it. Man must realize it. But if we left the church to preach what they are preaching today, man will never come into it. So when you look at what is being taught today for gospel, it's the, all the plans and the plots of the enemy. Because when you look at man... Today in church, in places called church, we are still seeing where they are living a defeated life. Not reinstated to their position. Because if they're reinstated to their position, we would have been looking like Jesus. Don't it? The Bible says, as Jesus was in the earth, so are we. So we have been given that access to live life like Jesus. Only we don't understand it because it's not being taught for what it is. 
We are being taught that we are in a religion called Christianity. When what Jesus Christ himself has in mind for us to live from and live in is the kingdom. It's only when we come into the kingdom and realize it for what it is that we can put and display the mind of Christ and live out our benefits that's in the kingdom for us. So it was this promise that was now being fulfilled when John announced it and Jesus preached it. The Jews understand this to be their king that would deliver them from the, the reign of Caesar whom they have to pay taxes to because they hear the promise that he would save his people from their sin. And so the Jew see themselves as his people because at the time they were the people that God chose to bring the promise of salvation true to save all mankind. <coughs> Sorry. And so the promise was there in the, in the Jewish scroll. They had all the necessary information of what God had in mind because he, this was the nation that he spoke with where Abram is concerned. Yeah, and so they add the information because God contacted the Jewish nation or the nation of Israel. He made contact with Abraham, their father, and he, he, he made a covenant and he continued to covenant with the children of Israel even up until today. And so we see, because they hear the promise that he would save his people from their sin, the Jews see themselves as the only set of people that was in this position. But that was not the, the mind of Christ. That was not the intent. And so all of humanity belong to the king. Every single one of us, be it Jews or Gentiles, we all belong to the king. We are Adam's descendant, and he is the one who put the first man and woman in the earth. So everywhere we are human being populated, you no matter which part of the world and there, you no matter if them black or them white, you no matter if them rich or them poor, all of humanity is coming from the descendant of Adam. Right? And so all human being belongs to him. And this was what the promise was all about. That he would save his people because look here. A God create Adam. So all of humanity belong to the king of heaven. He chose a small nation called Israel. Who are Jews to contract with. With them. The beginning of his plan. He never had him plan. You know? He just started him plan with the Jews. The Israelites. Yes. He had to start somewhere. And so Israel would cooperate with what God want done concerning the seed of his promise. And so we see that in the, in the nation of Israel, he first find a man named Abraham. And that's how they start. But the ultimate government is here. Right? So Israel would cooperate with what God want done concerning the seed of his promise. And so we over there, we see God promising Abraham that a seed would come. No seeds, you know. Seed, a seed would come and he would be born through the lineage of King David. Yes. And so the ultimate government, the king come already. Over 2,000 years ago, we hear John the Baptist announce him and he come preaching the same gospel. Why in a God's heaven we reach over here so we are talking about Christianity and religion and denomination. That's not what the church is supposed to be about. Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. God is not a religious God. God never find no religion. Jesus Christ never find Christianity. Man did. And so the enemy corrupt and deceive the church and put them into something called Christianity. Hence, when you look at it, that is what, that is what we have. 
That's why we are ignorant to the truth of what God wants. And so the ultimate government is here. And Christ the King established a people he called the church to announce, represent, and colonize man. To colonize mankind from the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. Back into the kingdom of God. So the church is here to promote a government that is a kingdom to bring back man from all the corruption of governments and religion that they have created. Right? A man set up. A man establishment. A man bring themselves back into these things called religion. It was never God's intention. And so the church is here to promote a government system that is a kingdom. To bring back man from all the corruption of the governments that the kingdom of darkness erect. To govern the human life. That's what the church is here to do. To take man out of falsehood. So when you look at humanity, they are governed by governments that are influenced by the kingdom of darkness. Because the devil is the god of this world system that we see. All the nations of the world that erect government, they are influenced by the devil. The Bible tells us that he is the god of the world. And this world doesn't mean the earth. It means system of government. Being the God of this world system, he influenced all of man's government system in every nation on the earth. But today, I continue to declare that the kingdom of God is here. And it is here to influence mankind who want to be under this government system again. As I said before, today's government system, they are anti-kingdom. Man government system become anti-kingdom because they are fighting against the rule of the monarch. And so more and more kingdom that was in our world, it's just a few of them left that are original kingdom, right? Every kingdom now, they are being fought against, right? And so the world take on a government that is anti-kingdom, they go against kingdom rule. They go against kingdom reign. And there's a reason for it. Because, because of how kingdom was in the past. How brutal and how wicked they were. People do not want to be governed by kingdom. And so they take the claim to that. They take the rule from one set of people and give it to everybody. But when you look at the democratical system, it's not so. The rule of man cannot be altered and justified with sinful nature. Yes, the governments of man, it doesn't matter which government they put in place. As long as they stay in their sinful nature, their Adamic nature that was fallen, where Adam fall and they become into this state of mind, they cannot rule from any system without corrupting them. Because it's not the system that is corrupt, it's the man. It's the man. So they corrupt the reign of governmental system. And then they say, look here, this is no fear. Make we get rid of the government here. Because it's not know, right. But when you look at democratic system today, it's not really better. Because I'll do what we say, we vote in a set of people and tell them, say, them have to work for we. Them and them have all the power. Same way, the rule is in a set of people and... Because at election time, then just come and say some, something and sweet you up and want your vote. And then go in there and sit, them, sit up on the top and raise themselves the best. So this, the, the, the problem with humanity and government, it's not about the government. It's about the nature of humanity. Yes. And as I said some time ago, that the only government that can truly give humanity and nature change is the kingdom of God. 
So if we don't have a government that is going to give humanity a nature change, a heart change, then we will continue to see the corruption after the corruption that was in our world. It will not stop. And that is why the kingdom of God is significant and different from all other governments. And that is why we must adhere as the church to this kind of governmental system. We must bring it back. We must fashion it. We must model it so that men and women of the world can know that it is a government that Jesus Christ brought back and not a religion. It's a kingdom from before time was. God is a king. And he's an everlasting king. Right? So he intend to have mankind operate and function from a kingdom government. His mind is not changed where this is concerned because he's still sit king. But who changed? Man. And so because man have changed over the years. Man have put into place what they call government after governments. People think that it is a government problem that they are having. But the government that we have today, they are run and influenced by the kingdom of darkness. And in order for us to be fully delivered, it's only another kingdom can deliver us from this kingdom. So the devil has no problem when we're in a religion. He can still domineer with life. He can still run. He can still rob. He can still kill. He can still destroy. Because it's only in the kingdom of God that you are protected. It's only in the kingdom of God that God establishes provisions for you to have. So when we hear this message of the kingdom and decide, say, Cho, our next religion, it's, it's a lie. I, I sit and I, when, when I was preparing this message, I think about it and I say, Wow. If only the church had understand the position that God called them to model, they would have been seated in a system that looked nothing like a planet Earth. So would I still have the kingdom in the church today? Because the church, the church cannot change the mind of Christ remain the same. And so do, do a man change government over the years and bring it down to what it is. If we, the church, were standing in the position and, and the intention of the king, then we would be showing people what this king government look like. Instead, when you look at the world today, they don't have nothing for pattern or understand what God government look like because the church is not in that position. The church, just like the world, have changed over time. Change over time. And they adapt the principles of the nations. The government setup of the nation is what they adapt. The church was never supposed to change. The church was supposed to have the mind of Christ. To put on display always in all nation the government of God. So this government, it be an everlasting government where the church is concerned. And as time goes by, people would know what the government of God look like. So today, when you look at the world, it's a struggling world. They are struggling right now to find another government system that works for them. Because democracy, democracy is shaking. Democracy is shaking. There is nothing in democracy right now that is not shaking. Everything around it is shaking. Because there is so much breach in, in election. It's not safe. Because the nature of man is corrupted, it's run. But when you come into this kingdom, Jesus said in order for us to come into this kingdom, we must be born again. And when he speaks about this born again, he's talking about having a nature change. Man coming back into the spirit realm where they are connected with the father again. So it's only this government of that, ah, uh, what we must call it now. Only this government can facilitate man with a nature change. No other governments of man. And the kingdom of darkness don't have it. Because the kingdom of darkness is why man so corrupted and dark. But Jesus Christ said, I am come that you might have life. This is simple, it, you know, people. You know, complicated a, a, a Christianity make it sound complicated 
There's nothing complicated about the kingdom. The kingdom is a government, and it is God's government, and it's what he intended for man to have and govern by. A man can only govern by this kind of government when they get a nature change. And when man get nature change, they don't want to corrupt themselves. They have the mind of Christ where they think godly, where they think God as their father, not as their enemy. Where they don't want to go, they go live their own selfish life in a perversion. Mankind today is so twisted. And perversion is taking over the world and into the governments and the system of man. Hence, we have a defeated world. A world in a darkness. Right? I stopped last time at, the, at Acts 19, verse 21 to 27. Let's go there today again. Let's see if we can wrap it up today. Acts 19. Verse 21 to 27. Now after these events, Paul determined in the spirit that he would travel through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. And after sending two of his assistants, Timothy and Arastus, to Macedonia, For a while. About that time, there occur no small disturbance concerning the way of Christ. Now, a man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of the goddess Diana, was bringing no small profit to the craftsman, craftsmen. These craftsmen he called together along with the workmen of similar trades and said, Men, you are well aware that we make a good living from this business. So yes, your religion stay. You see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but almost all over the province of Asia, this Paul, this Victoria, has persuaded people to believe her teaching or his teaching and has misled a large number of people claiming that gods made by human hands are not really gods at all. And verse 27, not only is there danger that this trade of ours will be discredited, but also that the magnificent temple of the great goddess um, Diana will be discredited and that she whom all Asia and the world worship will even be dethroned and lose her glorious magnificence. No, we just slip in a little part there, no cousin care nothing about Diana. All where this silversmith care about is money. And so a lot of, of, of reason why people can't drop religion today are because of the gain we bring to their life. So they are in it for money making thing. Because trust me now, in order for we to do what the king called we to do, you know, we can't in the but we are going to make money like what we see going in at the church today. Foolishness. And so, this is why some people can't quit. They like it because they make money from it. And so right here we made note that the message of the kingdom exposed religion. It exposed it for what it is. Showing people the truth of God's kingdom and the falsehood of our religious idols. So that is why some people don't like when we come by here. Because it exposed them faultiness and the foundation where they must stand upon. Yeah. And over the year, people make a lot of money out of church business. Right? 
And so, this also helps us to see why people stay in religion. They stay for gain. They not quit it. All them when they know, say this something them where I preach no right and you know biblical. They have it and they, because I it, they make them living off. There are those who become billionaire from religion. Not in the kingdom. The kingdom do not promote these things. Because in the kingdom are one king. You're looking at the world today where the church is concerned, a heap of king in the pulpit. One pastor have much with armor bearer. We might do with armor bearer and go, God know. Because he not carry no armor. But yet still they have 99 of them around them. So you see, these things that are only existing in religion. Yes, not in the kingdom, because where the kingdom is concerned, is God's order that we follow. It's God set up. It's God what we got blueprint we're put in a place we live by. Not us going out there and looking into the world and implementing things and placing them into the church. These things can only happen in religion. Not in the kingdom. In the kingdom, it's God alone is king. So everybody else have to come off of them pumps and prime. And them have to recognize who the king is. But in religion, they can't afford this. Because when you look at some person, and them are the king, and them have the throne in the church. They sit up and then contradict and then do all kind of something. And keep God people in a bondage. Yes, let's go to two, verse 28. No, they heard this. They were filled with rage. After the silversmith put in on their mind, you know. And they began shouting, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Then the city was filled with confusion. I saw it going on. You see, when you bring clarity to the church, enough time. You have one set of people, you know. It's like the devil just strategically set them in a place. To come against the will of God, the purpose of God. They know when you attack kingdom, they know when you attack the truth, so the devil just use them. And they are the hierarchies. They know in the, know in the congregation, then they know the minister them. No one uh, promote what God wants to promote. Yeah, at them. And so they bring confusion. To the congregation. Because here it is that you are trying to promote the right way of God. But these people, they are set up to stir. And to bring back foolishness and darkness. And keep the church dead and dormant. And when we look at ourselves, we wonder why we don't come in at certain things. It's because of the confusion of religion that is still among us. It's because we do not want the truth of God. It's because we rebel against the truth. We rebel from time to time. And we are the same set of people who live in rebellion against the truth of God's word that is always going to be in want. Always, because when God's word is not being preached for what it is, you dry up. You're, you're still dormant. You're dead because it is the word give life to us. It is spirit and life. And so we accept the old feeble tale sitting there and chat every day and promote the devil and in demon. But where the truth must be said for what it is, we don't want to hear it. And then we ball about what we don't have and the benefit where we don't come in. And wonder why not not change to it. It's because you are rebellious where the word of God is concerned. You don't want to hear the truth for it change you. And any time we rebel against the word of God, you know, what we do, we take we ourselves out of sonship. Because every son of God, the Bible tells us that all of us as children of God, we are going to be rebuked. We are going to be chastised. Who God loves in chase. 
So when we have wrong concept, God must address it. But we don't want to be addressed. We want to stay in our foolishness. And then tomorrow morning we beg and ball and pray. But things will not change in our life. These things have to take effect in our life in order for us to live in the truth and see the manifestation of truth. And so that is why we see a weak water down church. Because they always go against the will of God. And you look at the nation of Jamaica. Why you think it's so much crime and violence in it? And so much church there, Jamaica. The church them they are not make one. Because all we do is sit down in the old washout sitting from up so it has come from. And it not work. And when somebody like me stand up for, for show people the darkness and the foolishness where we sit down in a, we say, are we with she? Me know why I hear. Because I'm not that the norm and that me know. I mean like the program of religion, I mean. Did I help you? You're sick for much of the years and you're not getting no healing. The devil continues to traffic in our ignorance and keep us in darkness and kill us and trap us there. Never enter in the kingdom of God for what it is. Right? And so right here in verse 28, right here we see that religion are idols. And the idols are not the guardian of these people. But rather the people are the guardian of the idols. Let's read 28 again. What he say? When they heard this, they were filled with rage. They began shouting, Great is Diana the Ephesians. Right? Great is Diana the Ephesians. And the 29 said, And they were filled with confusion and people rushed together as a group into the amphitheater dragging along with them Gaius and Artisaros, Artis, Artachos and Macedonians who were Paul's traveling companion and Paul wanted to go into the assembly but the disciple would not let him even some of the officials who were his friends sent word to him and repeatedly warned him not to venture into the amphitheater right he wanted to go there to assist his his, his, his traveling companions but instead of the, the, the people then said no go in there you know, because if you're going to them all kill you me can better that them all tell him like what they do with me Mm. And so right here we see religion. We see that religion is an idol. And the idols are not the guardian of these people. But rather the people are the guardians of the idols. They defend the idols. It's the religion of our denomination that keeps people into today's church. Hold on. It's, it's not the religion or denomination that keeps people into today's church. But rather, it's the people who keep these denominations alive. And the denomination keep them, you know? And them keep the denomination. Notice, as soon as these people died, the denomination also diminish along with some of these founding fathers. And so a lot of persons build building and label them. And people call the building after the pastor's name. And that's what it is. A brother man the church. A brother steward church. A pastor steward church. And that's what it is. Because you have some church, and the family lineage running all when they not see if them come in heritage. And so the church of Jesus Christ belongs to no man. But Christ. The people is not for any man. But when you look at the church today, pastor owns some people and say, I feel people them. And then I want nobody to preach and take them away. Da, 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 da. And so church coming like shop and bar. 
Then take each other customers, and when they take each other customers, they have problem with the like and not supposed to one God. I say no, it's a foolish, a foolishness. So it's like church just set up like some business place for take customers. Yeah, but the church of Jesus Christ belongs to no man, none. The people is not for any man. But when you build your church, it's your church. It's yours. So that's why we see the pastor behaving like them a king. Also, we see that the matter of money was also being debated. Where are uh, which we, we know that people like religion because they are able to come in and make money. Nowadays, everybody is making gospel concerts. And most of the promoters are not even saved. So it's a money-making thing. Everything they talk about gospel. And you know gospel concert, yeah, Bill. Promotion, uh, and see if promoter cannot, cannot promote a gospel concert. And where the kingdom is concerned, we don't even do concert. It is not of God, it's of the devil. These things are not scriptural that we see the church engaging. So everybody make gospel concert. Everything they do and say a gospel. I know gospel. There is only one gospel. And this is the gospel of the kingdom. So most of what is put out there and called gospel today, it's not the gospel. They don't call it so. Because everybody depends on the bandwagon. It's a bandwagon. It's an Pastor, it's, 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 it's people hijacking the church and making it what it is. But it's not the gospel. Right? So in the kingdom, we do not promote this foolishness. In the kingdom, it's okay to take your family to a good family event held by the world. It's okay to dress up and wear makeup. If you have to, I want to. In the kingdom, you can pursue certain career in beauty culture that religious organization would be against. In the kingdom, wife and husband have date nights. We do go out to certain events and we have the freedom of having clean entertainment. Why well, not some church you can't do that? And that is why they have to put on things like rally and entertainment and do all the sitting in the church. Master got better entertainment out of the road. No, no need no entertainment in our church. But we don't believe in him. We don't believe. We believe in implementing things and taking them from the world and bring them into the church. Because we don't want to say we're there in a world or something. <laughs> and this is why we don't have the action sealed at the church today called a rally in the kingdom. We don't have action sealed because that's what it is. We don't have party called gospel concert. Because that's what it is, a party. And all these things in order to make money. We didn't see Jesus Christ with a choir. Come on. If you think the church must have these things, how come Jesus never have them? Jesus never go and when he sit down on the mountain, in choir he sing for us. Did he do that? Jesus go, and when he set, he said, repent. And so we didn't see Jesus with a choir and music. And all these ideologies of what we see in the church today. None of these things we see Jesus with. Where we get them from? 
Where did we get these things from? We implement it from the world. So today, the church have to have big music, big sound system, because clearly the church knows say my use if you catch people. Because people, God without man, have to implement some form of entertainment. I mean, man without God have to implement some form of entertainment. And that is why the world go off for entertainment because they don't have no God. When you don't have no God, you're lifeless. So you are run down every entertainment we have little life in it. That is why people drink and smoke and, 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 and party because of that are their life. But when you have God, you're not boring. When you have God, you're not... Then, and some people see and say, then, oh, you have... You're not boring. If you want to go out on a date, you go. You want to go to an event, you, you have the freedom to go because you know who you is. Right? And so we don't go from time to time and do these things and put them in the church and behave like this is what the church is supposed to be. Nowadays, if we don't have 15 smaddy, come like we can't have worship session. And you know, so the church not even for worship. Because when you come, you know, if you understand as the church, that when you come into the, 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 the building where we call church today, the building is not the church. The church come into the building to assemble and associate and to learn God and hear what the king is saying through the leaders. So if we understand, say, and our flesh come, we learn God, our spirit. We don't run down music and entertainment and praise and worship, you know. Because right now in the church, praise and worship become worship. The praise and worship is the God. I know for now I understand when I say this. And so we feel like we have to, every time we come at church, we have to sing. We don't have to sing. I wonder if we know that. So we know how to sing because we are spirit first. And it is the spiritual side of us that we come to feed. The flesh cannot please God. So that is why when we come, we say we are prepared the, 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 the people. You know, prepare the people. The spirit of God is already inside of the person's spirit that makes this person born again. So the spirit is always ready to receive what God has in store for them. But our mind, our religion, city, we have to entertain God people and do some foolish. And when you look on the church today, then sing more than than teach the word. Then do one heap of antics. Everything they do, they have one song with it. And if they don't sing the song, then they don't feel like they're complete. They don't feel like they're fulfilled. Then take up half and half to sing one song. Then do this, then half to sing. Everything then do, then have a song for it. It's like, you know, this school, the basic school. And half the time that they are supposed to be sitting there and learning God, it's taken up with garbage. One heap of program. What unnecessary. And by the time then the amount of something they fill then time with when the time comes for them hear the word, everybody tired and drop asleep because they just want music for dance and entertain them. Watch them. You see when the deep worship song them are play, some of them sit down because they don't have a God inside of them for worship. A flesh they care of a church. So we are worship is concerned, they're not even know how to worship. Notice them when you go in there. When real worship is being done in the church, a lot of fleshy people sit down. Can't worship. Because they are still in their fleshy mindset. And you see, when the fast song then start play, we are just the music they want. For get up their flesh. Then get up and then dance and go on with their style. And when that boil done again and done, then drop asleep when the preacher preach. That's what we see. That's what church is about. But we're not, we're not there here for that. The word of God must be what it is in order to change people. 
And so some people will never get this. They have to be taught well. Some of them really just spirit that they want to lay upon them and cast them out. Yeah. Yes. And nowadays, everybody is making gospel concerts. And most time, the promoters are not even saved. Yeah. And this is why we don't have action sale. Nowadays, religious church have sung for everything. In the kingdom, the learning of the scripture is very important. So more time is spent in the word and less time on the programming of songs. Learning the scripture is key to our everyday life because we have to develop to be mature sons so we can effectively live life in the kingdom of God in the earth and be knowledgeable when the adversary tempts. us. People today in religion don't know the scripture for what it is. Look at their life. If they believe in what they learn, why is there no evidence of it in their lives? Religious church people are hypocrites. They say one thing and do another. When you are in the kingdom, you have... S when, you, when you are in the kingdom, you hate sin because there is no room for sin in your life. Why there is room for sin in, in people in the church today, the knowledge of the kingdom is lacking. I rest my case today again. Why there is room for sin today in people's life in the church? It's because the kingdom is not being preached for what it is. So all that is there is a form of godliness called religion. A form of godliness called denomination. You name them. That's what is there. But the reality of who God is, that he is a king and he operates and functions from a kingdom. So if this is not taught for what it is, people stay in their forms of godliness with no power to shun and resist the devil. I pray that you are enlightened. Today again, my time is up and I'm out of ear. This is Victoria Miller. I just pray that you really take a look into what is being said and don't take this message for granted. Carla, good morning. All right, Sister Rita, you have yourself a blessed day. I give myself away. That was Sister Rita again. Good to have you with us today again. I give myself if we are going to really give ourselves to we, we have to come away from denomination and religion. Because God no support when no establish. And those things are so are established by man. They are man concept. That's all me I say. So until next week, walk good. This is Victoria Miller. The program is Lighting My World. You have been listening to Stars FM Radio. Bye. What would happen if a generation embraced this? Come on, tell them. Here I am. Here I am.